Hey, I'm Zach Braff. Uh, you're watching Theater Mania, and we are at the Met for the opening night party of Bullets Over Broadway. We've never really had a chance to sit down and talk. Drink? Sure. I made it myself. If it tastes from lighter fluid, it's because it's lighter fluid. <laughs> People had asked me for years to make it into a musical, and I couldn't see it as a musical. And then my sister said, why don't you do it with vintage music from the 20s? And then suddenly, it seemed like a good idea. The thought of doing contemporary music for it didn't seem right. But when she said, use the music of the 20s, and I have a, a very pretty good knowledge, and Susan Stroman as well, of uh, period music. So it became fun. It was important for Woody to have authentic music from the time period. You know, his his comedy and 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 his writings uh, live in an authenticity. So it was it was very important to have the sound of the twenties. And uh, we would sit around and just talk about different different songs that might be appropriate because it couldn't just be any song. It had to be a song that would would push the plot forward. If I hadn't been in the movie, I would swear that he wrote it for the theater. And then maybe at some point later in his life, he made a movie of it. It so belongs on Broadway. I play David Shane. It's Prohibition era um, New York. And he's a, a playwright who has yet to have a successful play put on. He's uh, struggling. He's work, driving taxis. He's, nothing's going right for him. And uh, a producer finds someone who will produce his show on Broadway but the guy happens to be a big mobster. And the only reason he wants to produce it is he's looking for a part for his sort of flapper, floozy girlfriend. I think what's amazing is this is the most fun I've ever had playing anybody because she is so free and she is such an idiot. And to, to share it with people and to hear the response is incredible. This is, he's an old school gangster. Uh, uh, I don't even, he's not mafia. He's old school bootlegging type guy back in the wrong 20s, you know, taken right out of a Cagney bogey movie, you know. And uh, he falls for this young girl and she's got him wrapped right around her finger. He's kind of a henchman, you know what I mean? He doesn't have a ton of, you know, clout in the in the Valenti world. I mean, he's Nick's right-hand man, but you know, he's, he's not a rich man or anything. So I think when he sees the opportunity to distinguish himself uh, in an artful way, then he, he takes it very seriously, you know. Some would argue too seriously. Oh, Helen Sinclair, she, you know, a nymphomaniac, dipsomaniac, kleptomaniac. She is a grand diva of the theater. She plays the, you know, she plays Clytemnestra and Lady Macbeth and Electra and Mrs. Alving. And she is a true actress. I mean, a, a dramatic diva star. And her dilemma, her compromise is that she decides to do this play that she thinks is so beneath her and that she's playing a frump, of course she evolves it into something else. But. I think it's uh, one of the happiest moments of my life. I really, I, I, I was a little boy, eight years old, going to see shows with my family, going with wide eyes, wow, one day I want to do that. And I've had a lot of success in my career and it's gone in lots of different paths, but to stand on the stage at the St. James and have a, with that amazing ensemble and these amazing Broadway legends and get a standing ovation at the St. James, it was beyond anything I could have ever daydreamed about. <laughs> 